They say when the nights grow longer and the winds start to howl, things begin to wake up here in Butte County. Old legends, eerie creatures, and stories that send chills down your spine. The kind you hope are just myths until you realize they might be closer than you think. Oh, they're definitely closer. <gasps> January, right under your nose, maybe even in your backyard or waiting in the shadows of places you thought were safe. Tonight, we're taking you on a journey through Butte County's most spine-chilling stories, ones that make you think twice about walking alone at night. We'll begin in the mysterious town of Megalia, where locals whisper about the sighting of a creature so strange it can only be described as a snake-headed dog. Then we'll travel to the campus of Chico State University, where something lurks in the shadows, a legendary beast with a thirst for blood, the infamous Chico Chupacabra. From there, we step inside the walls of Laxon Auditorium, where some say the spirits of the past never really left, and their ghostly presence is still felt today. Finally, we end our journey in Oroville at Cherokee Cemetery, one of the most haunted burial grounds in all of Northern California. With centuries of history, the graves tell stories of lives lost, but perhaps never fully laid to rest. Oh, it's going to be real spooky today. <laughs> this is Library-ish. Butte County Library's very own podcast. And tonight, we present you Spooky Butte County. Oh, spooky. So spooky. So grab a blanket, turn down the lights, and prepare yourself for the unsettling and the unexplained. This is Spooky Butte County. And join us, because the stories we're telling, they're already waiting for you. Are you ready? <laughs> the snake-headed dog we're going to dive deep into a tale that might leave you looking twice at those dark backcountry roads, especially at night. This is the story of the snake-headed dog of Megalia, California, a cryptid so bizarre, so unusual, that it blends elements of Arthurian legend with modern day sightings. Like many mothers, on that perfectly ordinary May morning in 1996, Sheila Charles was taking her son Shane to school. But that day, something far from ordinary leaped out into their lives and almost ended them. Picture this. They were driving through the sleepy town of Megalia when suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, a creature bolted out, of, out in front of her car. A creature unlike anyone could ever imagine. Described as being between four to five feet in total length with a sleek serpentine head, its reptilian eyes glowing a menacing shade of red. This thing had a body of fur covered. Described between four to five feet in total length with a sleek serpentine head, its reptilian eyes glowing a menacing shade of red. This thing had a body of a fur-covered quadruped. Thick black fur covered its frame with long hind limbs and shorter forelimbs, giving it an unsettling, almost unfinished appearance. Some reports claim that the creature had a tail. Others say it didn't. But all reports agree that the creature had a serpent-like neck, nearly 30 inches long, snaking out from its body. Sheila swerved, desperately trying to avoid the beast, but in her panic, she lost control. Her car veered off into a canyon. Miraculously, no one was injured. But what about the creature? Did it slip over the ridge and into the shadows? It was something that should, was it something that shouldn't have even existed? 
Whatever the cause, the snake-headed dog of Megalia vanished as mysteriously as it had appeared. Had Sheila hallucinated the whole encounter? Just as she had become convinced that she was going completely mad, the motorist that had been following Sheila rushed over and looked with a look of terror on his face, and he confirmed that he too had seen the hideous, grotesque creature that had nearly cost her and her sons their lives. That's right, dear listeners. A second witness confirmed the sighting, leading credence to Sheila's terrifying story. The creature was no phantasm. It was real. Or at least it was real enough for two separate people, total strangers who'd never met before, to see it. But here's where things get even more curious. Some cryptozoologists, like Carl Schuker, have connected this bizarre animal to the beast Glatizant. Yes, the very same snake-headed, hound bang creature from the Arthurian legend. A chimera of sorts, said to roam the forest, pers- pursued entirely by knights of old. Could it be that this legendary creature has resurfaced in our modern world? As we dig deeper, we find that the snake-headed dog isn't the only anomaly of its kind. In the late 19th century, in the harsh winter of Maine, another bizarre creature was reported by a lumberjack named Fowler. The creature he saw wasn't identical to what Sheila described, but had the same unsettling combination of long necks, strange limbs, and an eerie, otherworldly presence. This was in South Maluncus, a region rich with folklore and mysteries of its own, where creatures said to have long, serpentine bodies of wolf-like traits have allegedly been seen roaming the woods. Is, just, is it just a coincidence? Or could there have been a pattern here? And what of the aquatic legends tied to places like Loch Ness, where long-necked, multi-limb creatures have also been reported? Could these cryptid be somehow related? And now, I ask you, dear listeners, what are we truly witnessing in these remote pockets of the world? Creatures from another time? Another dimension? Or perhaps something closer to home? Biological oddities that hide in plain sight, waiting for the chance to leap into our lives, just as the snake-headed dog of Medalia did on that fateful May morning. Now, we'll dive into the shadows of one of California's most peculiar legends. If you've ever wandered through the campus of California State University, Chico, you may have felt it, that uneasy sensation that you are not alone. That something or someone is watching. For more than four decades, whispers of a mysterious beast have haunted the students and locals of Chico. They call it the Chico Chupacabra. Imagine this. It's a dark, foggy night. The streetlights flicker, casting long shadows across the empty quad. In the distance, a faint snarl echoes from the bushes. You tell yourself it's just a stray dog, but then you hear the sound again. Louder. Closer. A low, guttural growl followed by the unmistakable rustling of something moving through the underbrush. And then, silence. This isn't just some figment of the imagination. Seventeen separate reports of this terrifying creature have been filed with the University Police Department and Chico Police since 1978. Seventeen sightings, each one describing a beast like no other. Four and a half feet long, with matted brown and red fur, claws sharp as razors, and crooked teeth like something out of a nut. Some say it growl, its growls echo through the tunnels beneath Kendall Hall and lacks an auditorium. Others claim it prowls the bushes near campus late at night, waiting for its next victim. For a long time, the stories of the beast were thought of as nothing but urban legend. Then, in the 1990s, a farmer reported livestock deaths on the outskirts of Chico. 
goats and chickens found mysteriously drained of blood. Local authorities were baffled. What could leave behind such precise, bloodless corpses? Later in 2008, a student's dog was attacked in Lower Park by an unknown creature. The dog survived, but the fear spread. But it wasn't just animals that were stalked by this bloodthirsty creature. A group of teens camping in Bidwell Park in 1999 reported eerie noises throughout the night, only to wake up to find a goat, completely drained of blood, lying just outside their tent. They claimed to have heard something, something big, lurking in the dark that night. But the most spine-chilling part? Some say they saw red, glowing eyes watching them from the woods. Over the years, theories have emerged. Some believe the monster is nothing more than a rogue member of Chico's population of stray dogs. Others speculate the terror is the work of a prankster. But those who've come face to face with the beast will tell you, this is no prank. Locals have nicknamed the beast Chico Cabra. And while some students sport t-shirts mocking the legend, others won't dare set foot on campus after dark. You see, it's not just the fear of what the chupacabra might be, it's the fear of what it could do. So next time you find yourself walking alone at night, when the campus is quiet and the shadows seem to stretch a little too far, remember, the Chico Chupacabra might just be watching waiting to make its next move. Laxon Hall. But bloodthirsty cryptids aren't the only spooky creatures we're shining a light on. One of the most intriguing locations in the Chico State Campus. Laxon Auditorium is a place steeped in history, artistry, and, as legend has it, the presence of something otherworldly. Laxon Auditorium, built in 1930, has been a cultural hub for Chico State hosting everything from theatrical performances to concerts. With its classical architecture and rich history, it's no wonder this venue has become the backdrop for tales of the supernatural. Over the years, stories of ghostly encounters have surfaced, often revolving around a mysterious figure seen wandering the halls. This spirit is said to be that of a former student or performer lingering in the place where they once brought life to the stage. Witnesses describe feeling sudden chills, hearing disembodied voices, and even catching glimpses of a shadowy figure in the audience during performances. One notable report comes from a stage manager during a late night rehearsal in the early 2000s. They recounted seeing a figure sitting alone in the audience, shrouded in darkness. When they approached to investigate, the figure vanished, leaving the stage manager with an overwhelmingly set of sense of unease. In addition to visual encounters, many have reported odd occurrences, lights flickering mysteriously, doors opening and closing on their own, and even the sound of footsteps echoing through empty halls. These strange happenings have led many to believe that Laxon Auditorium is indeed a hot spot for parents. Historically, Laxon was not just a performance venue, it served as a gathering place during World War II, providing entertainment for troops and locals alike. This rich tapestry of life and energy may have left behind residual echoes of the past, contributing to its haunting reputation. The auditorium has seen its share of tragedies too. While there are no definitive accounts of a specific tragic event leading to its haunting, the emotional energy surrounding countless performances, both joyous and sorrowful, could very well be woven into the fabric of the building itself. Today, Laxon Auditorium remains a beloved venue. 
But for those who dare to stay late or wander its halls alone, the specter of its past looms large. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, the stories surrounding Laxon serve as a reminder that history often leaves its mark in the most unexpected ways. And now our final destination, the eerie Cherokee Cemetery in Oroville, a place steeped in history, mystery, and ghostly encounters. Oroville is a town with a rich past. Founded during the California Gold Rush in 1849, Oroville quickly became a bustling center for miners seeking fortune. With its roots deeply intertwined with the rush for gold, the town blossomed, giving rise to a vibrant community, but not without its share of secrets and tragedies. The supernatural lurks in the dark corners of this town, in creaky old mansions, along its spooky streets, and in the seemingly peaceful spot known as Cherokee Cemetery. This eerie yet stunning place is said to be the most haunted cemetery in Northern California, adding an unsettling twist to its beauty and making it a hauntingly captivating final resting place. Established in 1850, Cherokee Cemetery serves as a final resting place for many of the town's early residents, including miners, pioneers, and their families. As you walk among the gravestones, you can't help but feel the weight of history pressing down. Many of the markers tell stories of lives cut short, some by accidents, others by disease. The cemetery is a grim reminder of the human cost behind Oroville's prosperous boomtown growth. They say that in the grim dawn of the 19th century, a young woman was snatched from this world in a gruesome act of violence. The townspeople, their hearts ablaze with fury, demanded the killer be consumed by flames. But even death couldn't silence his spirit. It's said that his vengeful ghost still prowls the grounds at night, his blood-curdling screams echoing through the darkness chilling the bones of any unfortunate soul within earshot. There is also a story about a young man whose father passed away. The young man was so devastated by the sudden death of his father that he also passed away that same evening. Although the story doesn't have a terrifying ending, many in the community believe that if you place flowers on the son's grave, you will be rewarded with a thank you visit shortly after. Others claim that sometimes you can catch a glimpse of the boy, scurrying to hide behind the gravestones or in the foliage. Modern tales of hauntings at Cherokee Cemetery began to emerge in the late 20th century. One of the most chilling reports comes from a group of paranormal investigators who visited the site in the early 2000s. They captured what they claimed were unexplained orbs of light on their cameras and recorded eerie whispers that echoed through the trees, whispers that seemed to call out from the past. Many visitors have described an inexplicable chill in the air and the feeling that unseen eyes are following them. For some, this unsettling presence is enough to send shivers down their spines, leaving them eager to leave the cemetery behind. Over the years, the Cherokee Cemetery has attracted both history buffs and thrill-seekers alike as a poignant reminder of Oroville's rich history, a place where the past and present intertwine. Its dark, overgrown pathways and ancient trees create an atmosphere ripe for ghost stories and legends. Whether you believe in the supernatural, or simply appreciate the stories of those who came before. This cemetery is a haunting testament to the lives lost. Whether you believe in the supernatural or simply appreciate the stories of those who came before, this cemetery is a haunting testament to the lives lived 
and lost in this remarkable town. That's creepy. <laughs> I, I think that's Excellent. the creepiest one that we went through is the is the Cherokee Cemetery. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. <laughs> now we can talk. Thank you for joining us for our spooky podcast. Uh, I'm Tracy. I'm January. And we decided to do something a little different with this one and give you a little spooky stuff. A little spooky. Yeah. So which one do you think was the spookiest? Uh, you know, Cherokee Cemetery gave me chills. It really yeah. did. Which is interesting because um, I grew up in Megalia and I went to, to school in Chico. Yeah. And you'd think that I'd be like, who lacks an auditorium? That's so scary. Uh, <laughs> Cherokee Cemetery. Something about cemeteries. Well, something uh, about cemeteries. cemeteries yeah. Pretty spooky. Mm -hmm. and creepy. I really am like fascinated by the snake-headed dog. First of all, I love cryptid stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they're fascinating, period. Mm -hmm. But there's something about being in your normal environment, going through your day-to-day -day life, and have seen something so unusual that you can't explain in that context. And what the fact that there were witnesses to that particular yeah. incident really <laughs> yeah. makes it spooky, crazy. So tell us what you're dressed as. Oh, I'm, um okay. So I have an almost teenager who loves the manga Demon Slayer. She absolutely loves it. So uh, she dressed up as Tanjiro, who's one of the main characters as Demon Slayer. And I'm like, well, you know, I only have so much time before I'm uncool, which, you know, it's getting there. <laughs> it's getting there. Um, so I'm going to be Inosuke. And Inosuke is a character in uh, the Demon Slayer manga that we have here at the library. Look at yeah, look at me. I'm like, oh, behold. Um, this isn't the first one. This <laughs> is the one that we have. It's super popular. There's um, anime about it that's uh, on Netflix and uh, other stuff. But we have the manga here, and it's a fun series, and the characters are great, and it's really, it's got a lot of action. It's a little creepy. It's a little, it can be a little creepy and a little scary sometimes. But yeah, I'm one of the characters there. He actually runs around in animal pelt with no shirt on, but I can't do that. So um, I've got a little kimono with this little picture on it and his pig head. I like that. <laughs> and you are? Well, of course, I am Halloween's scariest candy, candy corn. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> uh, because it's the scariest of all candy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Candy corn. Mm-hmm. You know... It's so scary that I'm having kids come in on my afternoon creation mm. station. They're going to make catapults and we're going to shoot candy corn at each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's, hey! it's that scary. Well, and we, you know, we know this is airing like kind of late in the season. I mean, it's before Halloween, but, mm -hmm. uh, but so we've got some good stuff happening at the mm -hmm. branches this Halloween. Right? Very much so. Very much so. We do have the trivia bee coming up. And in fact, here's a little spot for the trivia bee now. <laughs> Looking for a buzzworthy event? Get ready for the 16th Annual Butte County Trivia Bee for Literacy. This Friday, October 25th at the Sierra Nevada Brewery. Doors open at 5.30 and the event starts at 7. This won't be your average trivia night. Teams will face off in a high energy battle of wits tackling questions on everything from sports to science. Come out and watch the action unfold live. Whether you're there to cheer, laugh, or maybe pick up a fun fact or two, it's going to be a hive of excitement. Bring your friends and enjoy a night of trivia fun and friendly competition. So mark your calendars for this Friday at the Sierra Nevada Brewery. Again, the doors will open at 530 and the event starts at 7. Let's see who will be crowned champion. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, now you can continue. I just want to get our little spot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Trivia is a lovely uh, thing that raises money for literacy, obviously. And mm -hmm. um, it's we're all going to be there. Uh, well, a lot of us are going to be there just as bees helping yeah. up. It's going to be I a mean, lot of fun. I mean, it's really a Butte County tradition. Mm -hmm. So please come down and come say hi. It's just a lot you of fun. You get to meet a lot of us. A lot of us, if we're not actually participating... Uh, we're there just mm -hmm. enjoying the trivia and stuff. So. It's a lot of fun if you want to contribute to your library and have yeah. a little fun at the same time, you know, and get some trivia down. It's it's a great time and people Absolutely. have a lot of fun with it. And, and the teams that participate. Oh, they're so much fun. Take it very seriously. 
And mm-hmm. some of the questions are super hard. This is not like a run of the mill, like just, oh, we're going to ask softball questions. Some yeah. of these are, I mean, it's fun too, but some of these are oh real my gosh. brain teasers. Yeah, and so. you've got, it, but it, if you love it trivia, ranges. It. it ranges though, because yeah. last year I remember we had a bunch of geography questions. And you know, you know, <laughs> public school and geography, I just, uh, yeah. I don't know my geography that geography well. Geography so hard. Yeah, okay. geography is hard. <laughs> and for a lot of it, I'm sitting there going, I don't know this. Was it you? Did you submit this question? You know, and then you have questions. Questions like um, which Kardashian decided to, you know, do something, yeah. and then you're like, oh shoot, pop culture. Um, yeah. Switching tracks. Um, and last year we had a Barbie question, so I mean, yeah. it, it kind of it goes yeah. everywhere. It's yeah, just it's general a, it trivia. It's lots of stuff, so it's a lot. Of but fun. it's it's a lot of fun. And at the end of the night, everybody's always laughing. Everybody's yeah. always like, "What a weird question! Who knew that? Yeah. You knew that?" Yeah. Doors <laughs> open at five thirty, as, mm-hmm. as we said in the end. Oh, it's so, so much just, fun! Yeah. It's so Definitely much fun. And there's snacks. Mm-hmm. And we also have so October. Every October, we dedicate it to the teens. It's mm-hmm. called Teen Tober at yes. the library in October, and we have special programs just for the teens. And uh, this year, at the um, at the end of the year, October twenty sixth, uh, Oroville is going to host a black light boogie for their teens. And what's going to happen is we're going to have black lights out, and we're going to have black light sensitive paint, and we're going to have canvases for them to paint on. And we're going to have silent headphones for them to listen to uh, music on. Silent disco. A silent disco. So they're going to be like, paint, 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 paint. And there's going to be snacks and food. And it's going to be a great mm-hmm. time. And this is all for teens at the Orville Library. You know, we just, you know, we provide all this stuff for free. If yeah. I haven't emphasized that from the last yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah. Free. <laughs> if you haven't gotten the, the message mm-hmm. that the library produces fantastic programs for the community. and it's all done for free. Like mm-hmm. I, you'll have to just tune into the next episode where we tell you again. Yeah, because <laughs> we'll probably mention it at yeah, least once or gonna, twice yeah. or five times. Absolutely, because it is—it's free, and people miss that. And people yeah. miss that thing. But yeah, this so this is a fun time for teens. Fun, mm-hmm. safe for them to come in yeah. and and have fun. And you know, mom, dad, whatever. If you guys want to hang out, you can go into the library, find a nice book to read. It is yeah. spooky season. We've got Stephen King. We've got um. If you want to get What's nostalgic, your book to read? oh my goodness, are we talking about spooky book? books? Yeah. So well, I mean. I'm I candy corn, of course. Yeah, I, have to about <laughs> I have to be scary. I am candy corn. That's right. Um, I'm candy corn. So I'm not usually a speak a spooky reader. Mm-hmm. I prefer a cozy mystery, or I prefer yeah. cozy romance to spooky. However, there is something to be said about being safe in your home and being nice and cuddled, and then getting mm-hmm. scared of, of a. It's an environment that you can control. I can always close the book and put it in the freezer. That's you know, true. if I'm going to be <laughs> if I'm going to be Joey, you know, I'm going to close that shining book and put it in the freezer well, and be like. That's where it is. Your children are getting near that age where they take it out of the freezer. And oh like, my it's goodness! On your nightstand. My my <laughs> my oldest loves the spooky stuff. She loves it. She sleeps with this blue stuffed animal that has like these mm-hmm. these conical, you know, very very sharp teeth. Ooh. It is terrifying. And oh uh, yeah, you would think that. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy horror, no. particularly movies, horror movies. The yeah. the best spooky ones that I can think of are the ones that are nostalgic for me. And when I was a kid, I loved mm-hmm. Goosebumps, you know, and. Yeah. Also, when I was a kid, I would read R.L. Stein's Fear Street because it was grown up spooky. Oh. And I did have one that I read, and I still think about it to this day because of one scene. And it was this one scene where a handyman's over and the garbage disposal is broken. Oh, no. And, no, no, and no, no, he's no, like, no, huh, I think there's something in there. I think, you know what? I'm going to reach my hand in there and I see if I can find it. I'm just going to, it's okay. Fine. There's nothing wrong. So he takes his hand and he reaches in and Arl Stein is great at this. You know, if you ever got to read him as a, as a no, kid. No, he's, oh. I'm, I'm too old. <laughs> I was already grown when the goose bump up. Oh, he's out. lovely. He has this way of, you know, just stretching out the tension where nice. you're just, you're on the edge of your seat and you're yeah. reading and you're scared to keep going. But yeah. he's, he's got his arm in there. He's like, oh, I can't quiet, you know, reach. I'm going to reach in deeper. Hold on. And he reaches, and then, you know, that's yeah, when... Yeah, the, the, the inevitable happens. The inevitable happens. What, what we're all assuming happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're all terrified will uh-huh, happen uh-huh, in uh-huh. our world. Oh, it happens. Uh-huh. Yeah, it happens. yeah. It happens. So now, I won't, yeah, I won't even reach my hand. Something falls in there. Something's broken. I'm like, nope, yeah, and it's done. We're buying a new one. Yeah, exactly. That's it's it. It's done forever. <laughs> it is. That one, and there's a certain scene from uh, Final Destination that millennials, you'll understand oh, this. Oh, I love Final Destination. Yeah, yeah. You, you ever get behind a logger truck? No. Oh, uh-huh. no. I, I do not get behind <laughs> logger. You, you don't no, no. and no. if one pulls out and, and up here we have a lot of them we have a lot of trees that get oh, cut God, down see, and first time i saw one i was like 
<laughs> and and oh. you break and you hang back and you're just like you go on ahead man that's that's all you you go at, great yeah because it's, it's terrifying me, i'm removing my candy corn topper because it's just giving me <laughs> that's it's, okay it's not, it's not you're candy corning st you're still you know a candy am, corn right? you're still, still candy a corn. candy corn Yeah, so, somebody, so I am now Sans. Uh -huh. yeah. What are your spooky reads? Uh, well, I am not much of a uh, horror book reader, although I am absolutely obsessed with horror movies. Mm -hmm. I don't read a lot of horror, um, but that a big part of that is because I don't necessarily read a lot of fiction, too. Mm -hmm. But my favorite horror author is Clive Barker. Mm -hmm. um, and, my f and this is also interesting for films, I really don't like anthology horror films. I just don't. Uh, but I do like anthology horror books. So Clyde Barker's Books of Blood is probably my favorite horror book to read. And of course, it was a series. And what was the tagline for the series? People are like books. When you open them, they're red. No! <laughs> um, Painfully accurate. <laughs> I mean, facts. <laughs> But um, I just, I, I really, uh, there are several good stories in there. And it's been a long time since I've read it. But it's really enjoyable if you like the little short, little grabs of horror. And mm -hmm. you can go away and come back and read it. You don't have to, which is always good for me, uh, to be able to, like, put a book down and come back and not lose anything. You put it in the freezer and come back. Well, I don't get scared <laughs> like that, see. Oh, I do. I don't get scared like that. I mean... <laughs> As a, but my favorite horror movie is probably I really enjoy John Carpenter as a director, and oh, and so fine. my two favorites are like The Thing, mm -hmm. his his version, the nineteen eighties thing, and uh, his uh, the movie Prince of Darkness, which not a lot of people have seen, but I highly recommend. It's a really excellent film. It is extremely scary. Both of these are like super scary, but Prince of Darkness is probably since the exorcist one of the most scary possession films so like unless you're the exorcist is pretty it. scary uh, and mean, prince especially of darkness mm -hmm. like gets probably of any film subsequent gets about as close mm -hmm. to being terrifying i don't really like possession films because it's like get possessed by a, 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 a demon and become a, a gymnast <laughs> And and so the you minute know. they start doing back bends <laughs> and they start like you super know, limber grand chitang across the basement, mm -hmm. I'm like, and um, no, not yeah, so no, much. I'm not. Again, because I don't get scared. Mm -hmm. So you know, the best parts. Uh, I love cult scary movies like Evil Dead. Evil, Evil Dead is so good. <laughs> Evil Dead is so much so fun good. because it's so it's so silly in I so many it. ways that you can't really be scared because you're just laughing at it, oh, and it. it's just so fun when they the the bodies come back and then you look out the window and they're dancing. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Did you hear Bruce Campbell recently told a story about he was at a convention and was asked when are we going to get Ash versus Freddy versus? Hey, Jason? there we go. And Ash and, and Bruce Campbell was like, oh, that conversation was had. Mm -hmm. And it went kind of like, bring, bring, hello. You know, this is New Line Cinema. We'd really like to do this movie. Oh, great. So um, what do we do after Ash dispatches <laughs> Freddie and Jason? <gasps> Click. Do, yeah. Hello? Hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> Ash has to win. Yeah, he's and, not going to. That would no. be the end of the other two franchises. Mm -hmm. and so, even though J they, Jason always resurrects. Yeah. Yeah. No, Ash would be like, "Welcome to my boomstick," and they would be oh, gone. Yeah. You know, no. I and, mean, and but it would it would be good fun. Mm -hmm. But it would be like a perpetual <laughs> cycle then of of ash versus this is true. It's such a good time though. It's so much I fun. And it. you know what movie I. I can't read his books because they're too scary. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, I'm cozy mystery slash romance. Yeah. I, I like it comfy. But Stephen King, mm -hmm. you have to admit, he is one of the kings of horror writing. Oh, absolutely. And the one that I really liked was It. Mm -hmm. And I liked It just because of the idea that you have this clown, the scary clown. And if you've ever read his um, 
his biography. It's not a biography. Okay, so it's it's called On Writing. Oh yeah, yeah. And I it's him it. it's him giving writing advice mm. is what it is. But he's also got snippets of his own life in there. And if you do decide go um get an audio version because it's him reading it out loud and we they have it on Libby. We have this app called Libby and you can download Libby. It's a free yes. app to get ebooks and audiobooks. You download it onto your tablet or your smartphone and with your library card, you have access to all of our um ebooks and audiobooks for free. And they're like 3 week mm. checkouts just like our regular stuff um and listen to him listen to him because he's talking about writing it and he's saying um you know what i get so much uh, criticism because it's a clown and he's like i'm sorry talk to any kid and they'll tell you the most terrifying thing in the world is a clown <laughs> and um he's like so i put i put this this most terrifying thing this it is a clown and at the end of the book sorry spoiler alert if you wanted to read it you oh know God, stop if you haven't read it if stop now it, if you've been like <laughs> or seen the movie or, or whatever the the way they defeat it is mm -hmm. that they 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 face their fear and they right. laugh at him and he you know gets smaller and he gets smaller and so you have to laugh at the clown yeah in order to defeat it and i always loved that that circular theory yeah. that that well, sort of like explains the whole thing why clowns and why are they scary mm -hmm. and then it's like an instinct we're just scared of clowns but then oh when you laugh at them they can't hurt you so that's why circuses work <laughs> I like it. so that's why yeah. we have that's to laugh all we will talk no, well that's why yeah that's why nobody gets eaten at the circus because, because we're all busy everybody's laughing. laughing at the clowns and the clowns are like dang it my evil thought is boy oh and this is sense. oh the poor clowns i'm so sorry if you're a professional clown <laughs> I mean, which is what Stephen King said in, in his yeah. on writing. I'm so sorry, but that's just the way yeah, but it, it just is. is. It's... We happen to be in Chico Branch today and the branch is open. We've run a little along with the taping. So we're going to bounce. By the way, just a little note, November, we're going to be featuring dinosaurs. So look forward to Dino November. Piggy, oh. I am. I'm a cute. Oh. <laughs> it's a Halloween costume. Yeah. I'm a character in a manga. Oh, thank you. It is. It is. It's a piggy snout. The character has a, a pig head on. So it's it's the season. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to We're hear so that. We love it. Yeah, it just, where else do you go? I, from I was day big. Aww. My mom would take me and life well it's we're so lovely. glad that we continue to be a regular part of your daily routine we love that very much so love it yes love it thank you they have the large print is amazing people mm -hmm. sleep on large print it's fantastic oh, it, i wouldn't be able to read if it was yeah. When I sit down to read, I want to read, 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 read. Yeah. A small print, I'm going. It's yep. hard. Same. It's hard. It's I can't easy. see it. I it need to get my to get readers smaller out. every year. I don't mm -hmm. know how that happens. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? We'll have to do something about it. Yes. Who do we talk to? <laughs> have a wonderful day. <laughs> that was lovely. That was so awesome. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so as you can tell, we're open. So um, mm -hmm. remember, we've got some great Halloween programming coming up. Please we check do. our calendar we do, online yes. or give us a call oh, at the branches. We, the pumpkin painting. Will this air before pumpkin painting? Yeah. Uh, Excellent. It will air on the 24th of October. Fantastic. So Chico is having their pumpkin painting event on Saturday the 26th. Mm -hmm. And there may still be some spots left mm -hmm. for reservation, but please do check. Because we go online or scan the QR code at any of the branches, and it'll give you time frames to um, reserve your pumpkin. And this is just for Chico. If you're going to one of the smaller branches you don't need to reserve and also uh note that in november we'll be celebrating die november <gasps> die november yes. is gonna be so much fun so um we're gonna have a little dino search and find in the kids area where you'll get to follow dinosaur footprints yep. and uh, this is in the paradise and the chico branches you'll get to follow mm -hmm. the dinosaur footprints and uh Find the little dinos that are hiding around the kids area and then come up and you'll get a little prize for uh, for finishing yep. this little search and find. Um, and then in Paradise in particular, we're going to have on November 2nd, a very special dinosaur story time. 
Uh, it's going to be a lot of, it'll be just this very special time. John, the children's yeah, librarian. you don't want to miss that. No, it's going to be a lot of fun, especially in the Paradise area. Uh, the children's librarian and I, John, are getting together, and we're just going to host a very special dinosaur-themed story time for the kids. Yep. So bring them in. It's uh, Paradise, uh, November 2nd at 10 a.m. It's going to yep. be a lot of fun. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. We hope you're enjoying the podcast, and we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.